guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. Well, let's jump back in to finish off Sarah's testimony to the defense to James Owens. And then we will jump on to part three, which will be the final portion of her uh, cross-examination with the prosecution. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. So I think we left off. You had called um, your ex-husband? Yes. All right. After, after you called your ex-husband, what happened after that? I ended up falling asleep. Okay. Do you remember waking up the next morning? Yes. Did you sleep in? Not intentionally. Okay. But you didn't get up at 8 o'clock, did you? No. Did you wake up closer to noon? I believe so, yes. Did you check the time? No. Now, um, did you hear some phone? your phone ringing? Yes, my phone <gasps> And uh, did you answer it right away? No. Uh, do you know how approximately how how many times it rang before you answered it? Um, I believe the call was uh, about three times. Did you know who was calling? I figured it was my ex-husband. And why would he be calling? Um, to make sure that. Um, I was still on schedule to pick up our son. At 3 that afternoon? Correct. And he goes to school there close by? Yes. All right. When you woke up, did you stay in bed for a while? For a little while, yes. All right, tell the jury what happened when you got up. I knew it was my ex-husband calling um, repeatedly. Um, I didn't answer right away because one of our problems is that he doesn't understand that I'm doing things around the apartment and looking for jobs and so on and so forth. So I inevitably just let it ring and I sat or I laid in the bed and I figured that George was downstairs either drinking or um, looking for jobs um, or may have just left. And so eventually I decided to get out of the bed and start moving to go downstairs. I was motivated enough to go downstairs. And um, when I went downstairs, it was very quiet. So I had the understanding, I believed that he had left. Um, and Did you check? To see if he was, where would he be looking for a job at? Um, usually on the couch, he would have my son's laptop and he and I, which we would share. Y'all only have, have the, the son's laptop? Correct. And the TV was not working at this time? The TV was not there. Okay. So you thought he would be in the living room on, on the laptop? Yes. He was not there? No. Where else did you look for him? Um, I looked on the back porch. Um, I went through the front door um, to see if my car was there, thinking maybe he had taken my car. Um, I checked the bathroom, and when I was checking the bathroom, I saw the suitcase, and I remember about the night prior, and I unzipped the suitcase. And Let me stop you there. You said you were in the bathroom when you saw the suitcase or coming out of the bathroom? No, where our bathroom is, I would have to go to the bathroom here. And then when I turned around, I noticed the suitcase and I remember. How did you feel when you saw the suitcase? I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that before. Describe it for the jury. I guess it was... I was aghast, and 
I just can't describe the feeling. Bless you. It was terror to Bless you. a certain degree. I'm sorry. Say that again now. It was terror to a certain degree. Um, I just can't describe it in words, the feeling of remembering. And then he was still in there. So what did you do? I immediately unzipped the... I immediately unzipped the suitcase and I was screaming, George, 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 and I was shaking him, I was shaking him, and I pulled him out and I stretched him out flat and then I began instantly trying to do CPR and then was trying to look for a pulse or a breath or just anything and um, was just screaming his name over and over and over again and come on George, come on George and I continued CPR, continued CPR and I continued CPR and um, he was gurgling and What color was he? What color was he? Yes. He was purple. At some point, did you call your, your ex-husband? Yes, when he started to gurgle, and I knew that my, my ex-husband is notorious for bringing my son over in very inopportune times when George is possibly drunk or doing things not appropriate for my son to see. And um, I just didn't know what to do. It was just a quick knee-jerk reaction. Brian was kind of my go-to person because of my family being deceased and I don't have anyone else that I can call. Um, and I just wanted to ensure that he would not bring my son over in the process of all of this at some point. So you called him? I called him. Did you ask him what to do? Or did you just tell him to come over? I just told him to come over. Did you tell him that you felt like George was dead? Yes, I did. And how far? You said it's five minutes from house to house? Yes. Did you call him back? Yes, because he was taking so long. It felt the seconds were hours. Yes. I'm still doing CPR at the same time in the process of it. I'm doing CPR I don't know how many times. Did he get there? Yes. Did he walk in? Yes. Did he walk out? Yes. What did he tell you to do? Call 911. What did you do? I called 911. Is that the recording we've heard here in this trial? Yes. Did you love George? To, to this day. Why did you love him? George was very passionate. George was a very real person. George was nice to me on the good days. George complimented me. George and I were two bodies with one soul, he and I would always say. I don't believe that I've ever had a connection with anyone like I have with George. Did you have that connection with your ex-husband? I did not. Was it even close? No. A violent connection, huh, Sarah? Constantly fighting, constantly having to call the police to your door, to your home, uh, not working consistently, drinking all the time. It's, that sounds like a very, very odd and dangerous relationship. And it was because one of you ended up dead. George has some good traits, doesn't he? Very much. Did George have some bad traits? He did. Did you drink too much? I did. Did George drink too much? Yes. Tell the jury about George's drink. If George was able to, he would drink from sunup to sundown and 
me having my son and trying to work and maintain the home and just have a life, a normal life as best as I could, somehow that upset George. And because I had a certain dollar amount from my divorce settlement, at one point it was from wine we could afford vodka, so a lot of the times he would take my car and my debit card and go buy the large, we call them handles, of vodka, which is the big, big bottle. And sometimes he would finish that all off on his own throughout an entire period um, of, a, of, a day, of a day into an evening. That's honestly where I thought that he was going to be that morning when I came downstairs because he's notorious for just automatically already being outside from drinking all the time. And um, you said you have an alcohol problem. George has an alcohol problem. Yes. How did George's drinking? Adversely affect you. It would debilitate my ability to help him the way that I was always trying to help him because it would be one good day, a day of survival, um, and then it would be another day where I'm having to peel him off of me and call 911. <laughs> Why would he get that way? Tell us, tell us his pattern as it relates to drinking and then object. Approach.
Objections overruled for now. You already got the three and a half years? Yes. Is there times when, when he would get to a, a state of intoxication where he would get violent against you? Quite often. Judge, can I approach the witness? Yes. As long as you show it to the state first, please. photographs and see if you recognize those. I do. Uh, those two pictures of your body? Yes. Did they sew injuries to your body? Yes. Were those injuries caused by George Torres? Yes. Are those photographs a fair and accurate depiction of the injuries you sustained at the hands of George Torres? On this occurrence, yes. You remember this occurrence? I don't. It was so often. You don't remember a specific specific date? I don't. But you're sure that that's you? Yes. Is that the injuries that he... What's the injury to the rib cage? Um, I don't remember specifically. This may These may be the pictures. So... When we used to go over to his brother's house, his one of his brothers and his non-responsive sustained. Do you know what happened to? Did, did George cause these injuries? Yes. Did, were y'all both drinking at that time? I don't remember on this event. Judge, I'd like to move this uh, exhibit into evidence. Okay. What was pre-marked as P will be received into evidence without objection is Defense Exhibit 2. Said that I would rather go walk my dogs than um, sit there and continue to drink. Um, so he slapped my thigh as possibly hard as he possibly could and said that you're not going anywhere. And it was it was a good smack on my thigh. 
Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the uh, the wound that you suffered as a result of George Torres slapping you on the thigh? Yes. Judge, I'd like to offer a few minutes. Okay. What was pre-marked as Q will be received into evidence without objection as defense three. You may, sir. And for the jury's sake, is this the photograph you just mentioned? Yes. Let's show you identification, defense identification S. See if you recognize that photograph. I do. Oh, is that your hand? Yes. Is that your blood on your hand? Yes, it is. Is that you standing, looks like, in a room with flip-flops? This is in the kitchen at Brian's house. Okay, what happened there? So, George was very drunk, and um, I wanted to leave, and he's notorious for taking my car keys and putting them around his neck, and my phone in his his crotch area and telling me to come get them. And I really wanted to leave because of how drunk and I knew the escalation of his anger. I didn't want to be there when it was at its peak. So I tried to take my keys from around him because he kept taunting me to take my keys, come get your keys. And so I attempted to go and get my keys. And so, um, he ended up getting a butcher knife, and um, I called. I had an opportunity to call Brian to come and help me, to please come pick me up, to come get me. And of course, he brings my son with him. And so I'm in the parking lot asking Brian to please help me get my car keys away from him. And there's neighbors, and it's a it's a scene at this point. And. George comes to the doorway of my townhome wielding the butcher knife saying that do I curse? Yeah. That no one's going to take her fucking keys. No one's going to fucking come into this house and he's waving the butcher knife and um, I walked up to him and I, I just wanted to leave and my little son who was I believe seven or eight at the time just is screaming give mommy her keys. Give mommy her keys. Let her leave. Brian was even trying to negotiate with him, saying, please, you know, you know she'll come back, just just let her just let her leave. So I went up to try and take the keys from him and he was pulling on them and I ended up pulling harder and um, he pulled them back again to try to pull me in the house and I pulled them even harder and it ripped my finger. And I at one point the, I had lost the fingernail, and the tip of my pinky was severely gashed. Well, Judge, I'd like to offer this for the Okay. What was the pre-marked as, Counselor? Just like S, but not quarterly. What was pre-marked as defense S will be received into evidence without objection as defense 4. For the jury's sake, is this the picture you referred to? Is that, is that the nail? Was it the dog still on? I believe so, yes. You know, I'm getting more and more angry with how she describes George. Do I think that he never fought back or didn't cause issues? No, I believe they both fought. And I, will, I completely believe that from the beginning. They had a very... It, a relationship full of a lot of domestic issues. But Sarah was the one... Again, she, she instigated so much with him. And I... She treats... You know, the way she talks about him, she treats him like a child. And she just continues to degrade him and... Just make him look even like a more of a worse person during this trial, during her testimony. It just, it makes me sick. Now I'm showing you a composite of 
application L, two photographs. Can you look at those photographs and tell the jury what they are? I wanted to eat, and I, while he was drinking, um, went and made myself uh, as quickly as I possibly could a micro microwave bowl of, I believe it was broccoli and cheddar soup, and I didn't get it out enough time, and he came up behind me and he slapped it out of my hand, and it was a second degree burn. I went to the hospital for it. Um, are those fair and accurate depictions of the injury with the burn to your thigh? Yes. We'd like to offer uh, identification L in evidence. No objection. What was pre-marked as L will be received into evidence without objection as defense five. Yes, sir. You had to go to the hospital as a result of these injuries to your thigh? Yes. Is, this, is that a depiction of the bird? Yes. Is that your thought? It's my thought, yes. And your name? Yes. me in my leg. I almost bled to death. All right, well, let's, let's go back and explain what led up to that. I thought it would be nice to cook a nice steak dinner. We don't have two nickels to rub together, so I thought it would be special to make a steak dinner and make potato and go above the normal whatever's left over in the refrigerator. And... Um, so I spent a lot of time doing that, and um, George is drinking the entire time, and on the back porch. You were drinking as well, were you not? I was drinking. Um, he was on the back porch while I was in the house and I was cooking. And um, it was one of those where maybe if I start making dinner now, it will be over at a particular time and we can go to bed at a reasonable time. And... Um, I even put it in the bedroom and had a movie set up for us to watch. Um, so it would just kind of be dinner in bed. And then um, he came upstairs and saw that I had made the steak dinner and I don't know how to describe how drunk he was, but it definitely was not George. And um, had him come lay on the bed, sit on the bed and, you know, put the, um, I, I got the dogs out and. Um, I presented him with the steak dinner and um, sat down and uh, was getting ready to start playing the movie and um, he starts being very rude and cursing the steak and finding fault with it and then um, you know I'm having to encourage him to eat you know if you want me to cut it up for you I will cut it up for you did you want some more sour cream for your potato your potato what can I do to make you happier and um, then he started to pull on me and kept saying that excuse me that I just want to fuck you fuck you on the steak and fuck you on the on the potatoes and I took offense to that and I kept trying to encourage him to eat I started to eat. Is this just him really drunk and saying nonsense? I don't know why he was so angry that day. I don't know if it's because I was, I, I got steak. I don't know. I, most of the time I don't know the reason why. Um, so um, I couldn't take it anymore. Obviously, I was not going to be able to eat, so I started to crawl off of the bed to leave, um, just just the bedroom. 
And he told me again that I'm not going anywhere, and he stabbed me in my leg, and it crunched. You could hear a noise that it made, and blood just started to come out of my leg, just like a fountain. So I got off of the bed. He's starting to freak out and um, grabbed me a, a towel. Um, I got a wet towel, and I'm sitting here holding the towel, and um, it's increasingly becoming even more and more saturated saturated by the minute. It's just minutes. So I'm going my, uh, through towels and towels, and I said, George, I think I need to go to the hospital. This is not... This is not stopping to bleed. This is serious. And um, he got on his knees and begged me, please don't call the police. Please don't call the police. Please don't call the police. Um, and inevitably, he went and got my car keys and put them around his neck again and my cell phone. So I was not able to call him, call anyone, and I wasn't able to leave in my car. So... I figured I would just go downstairs and I'm just going to go downstairs and I had propped my foot up on the glass table that we had and blood is just everywhere. Blood is everywhere. Um, I can't keep up with the amount of blood and I'm starting to feel very weak and really weird. And he comes downstairs and he's still begging me, please don't call 911, please don't call 911. I, I kept telling him there's something, this is serious, this is, this is something. Um, because he knew that he would probably get arrested or something bad would happen to him. So I, I couldn't take him anymore. He was just all over me and just, I'm bleeding. I'm, I'm bleeding very badly and he's having me try to console him. And I kept telling him, please, I need to call 911, P please. And I said, okay, just let me, just give me a moment. And I crawled upstairs to my son's bathroom, which is the furthest bathroom away from everything. And I remember holding onto the sink, and I looked into the mirror, and my lips were blue. And I, I knew I needed help. I, I, I needed help. And he came upstairs, looking frantic for me, calling my name. And then um, I turned to him and I said, "Please, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. I, I've lost a lot of blood. There's something wrong. My lips are blue. Please." Please, we don't have to call an ambulance. If you could just take me, just I'll drive whatever I can do, please, to go to the hospital for this. And he said that before anything happens, I had to concoct a story in order for him to not be arrested or be in trouble when we did inevitably get to the hospital. So I'm sitting there with this blood-soaked towel with blue lips trying to come up with a story of what I can tell them when I go down there so he's not in trouble and telling him that it's okay. And I came up with the, the story of that we were sword fighting silly after drinking with our steak knives and he accidentally punctured my leg. And from there... How did you get to the hospital? Originally, um, he told me to drive and because of the amount of alcohol that he drank, and it, it was, I couldn't. So um, he got into the driver's seat and drove me, and the entire time he's barking at me to make sure that I get the story straight. We're sword fighting, okay? We were drunk, you know, did you go to, did you go being to silly. Sword? Yes. All right, and did uh, you get treated there? Yes. Um, right. I, I was bloody, and... Um, All right, let me show you the photograph. Wow. I mean, it sounds to me, well, first of all, he wants to screw her on the steak in mashed potatoes. Mm, I guess they're into kinky stuff. I don't know. Sort of seems more like Sarah's type of thing than George's, but all right. As far as this whole stabbing situation goes... What did you do to instigate him, Sarah? When if he said, let's say he said he didn't like the steak and he just wanted to have sex. Let's just say that's what he said. So you got upset probably because you got this whole meal and he didn't want it. So you probably yelled at him and it started a whole thing. As far as I'm concerned, the story that he's He's begging you not to call the police. It's, that's possible. 
But the fact that he's saying you have to come up with a story before you go to the hospital, that seems more like your kind of way of thinking, doesn't it? I mean, it seems more like a Sarah Boone move, in my opinion. I show you this? Yes. All right, is this a fair and accurate depiction of the uh, injury to your leg? Yes. I had to go to two different hospitals for it. And uh, you lied to uh, medical personnel about how this happened? Yes, they brought in sheriffs and everything. Was it consistent with, they brought in sheriffs? Did you, did you have to answer to the law enforcement officer? Yes. Did you uh, stick with the story that you and George had agreed? I did. Okay. Judge, I'd like to offer this uh, deposit exhibit. No objection. What was pre-marked as K will be received into evidence without objection as defendant six. with the, the surgery. Okay. But you eventually mm -hmm. recovered? Eventually, yes. Do you have a scar to that effect? I do. So can you step down and show the video? Mr. J? Okay. You may. There's a lock, sir. <laughs> Trying to garner sympathy from the jury. And uh, what's up with Owens touching her leg and she's um, reaching over to, to move his tie? It seems a little too close for comfort, for my opinion. Right, I'm showing you identification T. You recognize that photograph? I do. Yes. All right. Looks like you got an injury to your lip and to your face. Do you recall this event? I was trying to sleep and... Have y'all been drinking? I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, I know that he had been drinking. This is one of the instances where I would go upstairs to try to go to sleep. And but y'all drank together a lot, did you not? Sometimes, yes. But there were times where he wanted to stay up and continue to drink and you wanted to go to bed. Many times, yes. You were done. He was not. Correct. Was that one of these times? Yes. So tell us what happened. I'm sleeping in the bed, sound asleep, and he comes into the room and grabs me by my hair a lot of the times and... From here, he scratched me from trying to grab me and then grabbed my hair and pulled me off of the bed and then raked my face across the carpet. These are these are carpet burns. To your lips? Yes. What about to the, looks like the eyebrow area? That's from where he, from grabbing me, scratched me and got a hold of me by my hair. Why was he mad at you? Because I wasn't downstairs with him. He wanted you to be drinking with him? All the time. All right, I'd like to 
want to introduce, introduce the identification to you then. What was pre-marked as T will be received into evidence without objections. Defense Exhibit 7. You may, sir. Uh, do you see the injury between the eyes and uh, the injury to the lip? Yes. As you described? Yes, and then the blood going down my eye, yes. Joining would have been marked this exhibit. Identification, our defense exhibit. You? Identification. Yes. Can you describe that photograph? I can. Go ahead. Uh, this was the first time that I ever called 911. Um, George and I had gone to a bar across the street within walking distance, and um, at some point um, I asked a, a guy or he asked me somehow or another it was over a cigarette and um, he left and I didn't know where he went and the bartender said oh he, he left he took your car and he left so um, why would he do that well I found out when I got home it was because I spoke to a, another man and um, so I paid the tab and I I walked home and he's sitting on the back porch with the handle of vodka. And I was walking on eggshells and terrified and kind of treaded lightly when I came in. And he acted all natural and fine. So I didn't know the reason why that he had just gotten up and left with my car. So then um, he calls me a whore. And then he calls me a slut, and then he calls me a cunt, and gets up and pushes me. And he pushed me with both of his hands so hard that we have um, this little area where our washer and dryer is, and there are metal doors that are on it. And he pushed me into the metal door, and then I fell back, and he got his knees on top of me, on my arms here, so I was pinned down and was starting to strangle me and hit my head up against the metal closet over and over and over and over and over it again and calling me a fucking whore and you're such a slut and fuck you and everything and um, I, my tongue was flopping out of my mouth and I, was, I thought I was going to bite my tongue off and because of the amount of noise I guess my head was making on the metal door he slid me down and got back on me and then started to strangle me again and it was on we have carpet but it's very it's like concrete and I was able to get my arms out from underneath and grab his throat and get him off of me so I get I got him off of me and I pushed him off and he came up and he goes you fucking bitch and he stomped my face and the next thing I know I woke up I Obviously, Did tried you out. Down? I'm, I'm obviously, I guess, yes. And um, he was passed out on the floor, and I woke up frantic, looking for my phone, and I immediately called 911. Okay. The police, police arrived on that incident. Yes, they did. Is this a fair and accurate depiction of the injury you sustained as a result of him kicking you? Stomping, yes. It was a stomp. No. All heel? I saw was his heel. This is a, we ask that this be identification you be admitted again. Okay. What was pre-marked as you will be received without objection is defense eight. I 
I don't believe that that is a real black eye. Now, I posted this picture with that question on the community tab. So if you'd like to go check on that, please let me know your thoughts if you haven't already. It just, there's no swelling, okay? There's no other discolorations and there's nothing in her actual eye. It looks to me like she amber herded it. And for those that don't know what I mean, meaning she used makeup or some other way to fake it. Again, that's my personal opinion that it's not real. Showing you identification V defense. Do you recognize that? Do you have to speak up? Yes. Can you um, identify that picture? Um, yes. Is the that your leg? Yes. And uh, is that was like the injury to your knee? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the injury you sustained in your knee? Yes. How, do you remember how that happened? Yes. Did you tell the jury? I was trying to get off of the back porch and he grabbed me and pushed me and it was a rock or a really pe sharp piece of mold um, from him grabbing me and pushing me onto the ground and I, I guess I just happened to hit my knee just right on whatever it was. Were y'all drinking? Yes. Why, why did he push you? Because I wanted to get off of the back porch. And he wanted to stay out there? Yes. He wanted you to be with him? What, what's the deal with him wanting to be with you all the time? Security, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Did you do your best to please him? And then some, yes. You guys, I am just sick over the constant it's all about George he did her wrong oh he pushed me because I wouldn't get off the porch he stomped on my eye he stomped on my face he did this what about you Sarah what did you do to George what did you do to a provoke him and also what did you do to hurt him because I I don't believe for a hot second that this was all George. I think a lot of it was mutual, but I think also a good portion of it was on you. And really the end of it was all you, as far as I'm concerned, what took his life. So there's just no responsibility being taken by Sarah Boone in any of this. What was pre-marked as V will be received into evidence without objection as Defense 9. Mm -hmm. Now, was Boone, were you treated for this or did you self-treat? Um, <clears throat> First aid kit that I had for my son, and I just cleaned it up. You what? I said I got the um, first aid kit that I had for my son, and I just cleaned it up and put a bandaid on it. Lord, I'm showing you identification W. That's identification. You recognize that photograph? Yes. What is that a photograph of? This is a photograph of my arm. And uh, is that a fair and accurate depiction of the arm with some type of injury? Yes. Do you remember this attempt? Multiple times, yes. Well, we're talking about this isolated event where this photograph was taken, the injury you sustained. Yep. Who, get, who, who injured your arm? George Torres. Do you remember this event? Yes. Did you tell the jury about it? This was one of the instances where I would try to pull away from him, and I don't know how my arm started to do this, but um, from him him pulling from this way, how hard he would pull, um, with me trying to struggle to get away from him, it, it would leave these bloody, um, under the skin splotches. So he wouldn't hit you sometimes, he would just grab you and pull you. Yes, from me trying to pull away from him, that's the point of it doing this, from me pulling away from him. Now this is one of the many times y'all were both intoxicated? Um, I, I mean, I can't say for sure, but yes, but whenever it would happen, yes, we would be thinking. 
maybe Sarah, maybe these were injuries because you were going after him and he was defending himself. And I will say for Owens, the one, the one good thing he is doing here is tell, is asking her if she was intoxicated. Because let's be honest, she was always drunk in all these situations. I believe that for sure. <clears throat> Identification W is evidence. Okay. It was pre-marked as W will be received into evidence without objection as Defense Exhibit 10. You may, sir. It doesn't look like a wound or anything. Tell me objection to commentary. Sustained. I'm sorry. Tell me. You said it's just from the grip? Him losing his grip? Yes, it would be from me pulling away from him and whatever under the skin it was that it was disturbed from the amount of pressure of him holding and then pulling from me would create those on my arms. Okay. show you defense exhibit X for identification. Yes. And what is that a picture of? This is a picture of my ear, side of my head. Is that a fair and accurate depiction? Yes. Of the injury you sustained by George Torrio? Yes. Do you remember this event? Yes. Were you drinking? I, at the time, was not very young. On this event, you were you had not consumed any alcohol? Um, I'm, I mean, I may have earlier. This was another I was in the bed trying to sleep. Where was George? Um, downstairs drinking. All right, and so... You, you were wanting to go to bed, and he wanted you to stay down there with him? Yes, I was in the bed. All right, tell the jury what happened on this event. I believe this was the instant where I was in the bed and he, I used to barricade the door with our dresser. Why didn't you just lock it? Uh, all of the locks were broken in my home. Yeah, they were from George to the men, including my son's. At one point I could seek refuge in my son's room, but he broke that one as well. Well, tell me, explain how that happens. Tell the jury, we can't. George wants me, which he has told me numerous times, that I am to be with him at all times and doesn't like to be uh, apart from me or away from me. So whenever it was even just to go to the bathroom sometimes, I he would go with me. And you have to understand, I have a two-story, 900-square-foot townhome, so there's not many places to go, so it just happened to be that... It would be upstairs or downstairs, or I'd be in a particular room or not. So, um, inevitably. Did you want some time away? Yes, I did. Even if it were just him upstairs or me downstairs or vice versa. So, I rarely got to sleep. Um, this was one of the instances because I had barricaded the door with our, I don't know, 200 pound dresser that we had. And then um, I had my nightstand barricaded up against that, up against the bed to where it was even more difficult from the prior times of him breaking in. Um, and he would, I don't know how he would ever do it, but he would get himself in through the, the crack of the door that he would be able to wedge in, a wedge the dresser and the nightstand. And he pulled me out of the bed and um, told me I was going to die. And um, it's, I believe it's this incident, and then and punched me and punched you in the side of the head. Yes, in was my it temple a, and everything. Was it an open fist or a closed fist, or do you know? It was fully closed. Like identification X introduced in the was pre-marked as X will be received without objection as Defense Exhibit 11.
medical treatment? I know the police came, but I don't remember. I remember it hurt for a good solid two weeks after that. Is this one of the incidents where the police were called? Yes. Now, do you recognize this photograph, which is identification of Y? Yes. Was that the date of the incident? The date of this event? No, it happened prior. I mean, but this picture that was taken of the... This picture was taken, would have been taken February 24th of 2020? Yes. And do you recognize that as your close-up facial? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of how your face looked on February 23rd of 2020? Yes. What's the significance of this? Again, because I was sleeping, um, George was upset with me and came in with a metal curtain rod and bent it and snapped it in half and then crunched me in the forehead with it. Um, and it started to beat the furniture that was in the, um, in the bedroom. Um, it, this is probably a good month uh, before or after it had happened, before I really do believe that I should have gotten stitches, but I was not allowed to go to the hospital. Judge, I'd like uh, identification why introduced into evidence. It was a gash. Okay. What was pre-marked as why will be received into evidence without objection as defense 12. Is that the same curtain rod that you mentioned in the two-hour interrogation video? Which they didn't take in us. Uh, this was photographs that were taken the, uh, I guess it would have been the, the crime scene. Was it the crime scene the investigator that came out and took photographs? I don't remember who it was, but yes, someone did on the day of the incident. Was it different from the, uh, the extraction, the phone extraction expert? Was it somebody different? I think. But this, is it this, is it this uh, wound right here? Yes, and remember that's a month later. Uh, I don't see much going on there, Sarah. A little mark or dot. I mean, you could have done that to yourself or hit yourself accidentally or but doesn't look like much of anything to me and then on that same day uh, they took same time they took this photograph as well which is uh, identification R yes alright what does that do I believe it's from holding the baseball bat and... Is that an injury to your hand? It's a bruise. Was that taken, um, February, was it February 23rd, 2020, when the investigators came out? When, uh, February 24th, I believe. February 24th. Okay. I'd like to introduce uh, identification law to that room. What was pre-marked as defense R will be received into evidence without objection as defense 13. Yes, sir. from holding the baseball bat. Can you help him with it? Yeah, he's trying to get his hand back in. I'm sure 
showing you identif defense identification in. Can you look at those? See if you recognize them. Yes. And for those fair and accurate depictions, as a composite of the events that occurred in relation to George Torres and the t your TV? Yes. Yes. All right. Is that, are those stills of a videotape that you took? Yes. And is that videotape, was it on your phone? Yes. So when it, law enforcement sees the phone, they would have had access to this video? I believe so, yes. And tell me about it. Um, Lucas likes to watch cartoons and play video games on the big screen, which is, this is the big screen, and um, I would have to call Brian to come over sometimes to help me figure out the fire stick and whatever platform or whatever whatever it was that Lucas was trying to view his uh, shows and video games on. And I don't remember how um, uh, George found out that Brian had come over, I believe because it was actually fixed and he knew that I didn't know how to do it. Um, found out that Brian had come over to fix it and... Was he jealous of Brian? know if he was jealous of Brian. I think that he had a fear that I somehow would go back to Brian. So I, I think by Brian helping me with things for Lucas, um, he just didn't want him to be interacting with me at all. So Lucas wasn't over here this day, was he? No. Brian wasn't over here this day. Um, he may have been... I can't remember when he actually fixed the television for Lucas. But y'all were drinking was there. I, I know he was for a fact, yes. Chances are you? Probably so, yes. Okay. I would agree. So how did it end up badly? Um, he accused me of sucking Brian's dick and told me that he was going to break my face with the bat and that he was going to make me unrecognizable to my son with the bat. And then told me that he's going to destroy my fucking television. And then I was going to remove it from the apartment. And if I didn't, I was going to be, again, unrecognizable to my son. So did he grab the bat? Absolutely. He already had, had that in his hand. And he told me that I had to videotape it. Did you videotape it voluntarily? There is a video, but I'm going to go ahead and ask Judge if I can introduce this <coughs> identification of these five photographs with the evidence. Okay. Is it O or N? I have O being a composite of five photos. Not having a single photo. We're moving in O. Okay. All right. Well, it's pre marked as O will be received into evidence without objection as defense 14. going to help him, but either way, I was picking a part and removing it. And what is this picture of? The process of him destroying my television. 
while you're videotaping. Correct. Is that the result? No. After that, he ripped it off of the TV stand. Did you later pass out? Yep, that usually does. So, these pictures, in my opinion, they don't tell the whole story. Sure, it shows George with a bat and, and allegedly smashing the television. But why are we not seeing the actual video instead of these four or so images and having Sarah tell us what supposedly happened? Because I don't believe it was exactly what she says. And again, I think this is another tale with the truth in there somewhere, but change to match whatever she wants it to be. What's he drinking in? I, I don't know. Vodka or something, I'm sure. showing you identification in. Did you recognize that? It's my left hand in the stairwell. Pardon me. Were those, was that a photograph taken by a crime scene? Correct. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of your um, living room and stairwell? Yes. And, um, I'm going to try to introduce this as identification nine as an exhibit. No, it's pre-marked as M, correct? It's got N. N, I apologize. What was pre-marked as N will be received into evidence without objection as defendants 15. about this room? Um, this is my living room. Um, this wall that we have over here with the hearts, um, that's where we would display all of our artwork. We were in the process of taking it down to add more um, so he could continue to be entertained. The bookshelf over here is my son's bookshelf with all of his toys and little guns and uh, musical instruments. He's got his little karaoke machine down here, his guitar. The stand right here with the red bucket on it, that was the television stand. And then my back porch area and the, the dog bed here. Okay. And then it looks like in front of the bookshelf at the uh, foot of the uh, stairs, is, is that a doggy? It's a baby gate, but um, my dogs would wander upstairs sometimes and go to the bathroom sometimes when we couldn't get them out. So I would, at nighttime, um, or whenever we weren't home, make sure that they didn't go upstairs. And plus, Penny was blind. There's an allegation that you pushed George down the stairs? Apparently. Or got him in a suitcase upstairs and pushed him down the stairs? Supposedly. Did that occur? Absolutely not. Is that bookshelf disturbed in any way? No, nor the plant next to it. I'm showing you composite two photographs, identification M. Did you look at those two and see if you recognize them? Yes, this is me sitting on the back porch with my dogs. And as you can see that, we are both drinking. All right, who's taking the picture? I'm guessing George's, or maybe it's one that Lucas, you know, Lucas wasn't on here, so it had to be George. How can you tell y'all were drinking? Because there's a cup here and then he has a beer. And uh, there's two dogs, there's one sitting next to you, who's that? That's Penny, she's the blind dog. 
I used to have to pick her up to put her somewhere so she would stay there because she um, was unfamiliar with the area, especially since we moved from my marital home to the um, townhome. So most of the time, Penny would be close or next to me. Who's next to the film? Um, this is little guard dog, Tess. Um, she was the deaf dog. Um, and this is the fence here. Well, I'll show them. Okay. Um, but this is Tess, and then this is Penny. Deaf, blind. Penny and Tess. All right, and then the second one. This is Tess on the back porch taking a nap. She was never far from me. All right, when George was sober, how did he treat the dog? Nice. I don't know if he was a, a, a pet person, what, what but I mean, he was he was nice. If I needed him to feed them, they, he would feed them. Were there times when George was drinking, where he would threaten to harm the dogs? All the time. Uh, we have to tell the jury. One of the worst. One of the worst threats was Penny being blind. Um, he would um, actually leave the gate open in the back. He wouldn't threaten me to do it. He would actually do it um, on nights that I had to go up to sleep or some. I, I fled the night before or something um, and would tell me that he hoped that I would come back and find her bloated body dead in the pond across the way from our townhome. And Tess was notorious if I wasn't there to go look for me and would say that uh, he would hope that I would have to scrape up her dead body from the, the street that was out in front of our uh, apartment complex. Why was George upset when you? Why would he threaten to harm the dog? Anything that he could get to try to have some type of hold over me. Control? And he knew I loved my dogs very much, especially that they were handicapped. This, this whole crap that he threatened her dogs and that he would let them basically get killed, I think it's a bunch of garbage. It's crap. Okay? I think it just sickens me. Hearing her go off about the two of them is one thing, okay? The fact that she's now alleging that George was an animal abuser besides being a drunk and having domestic issues with her that just is like is insane and i think it, it it makes her in my opinion it makes her more of an evil monster yes uh, penny would hear his voice and instantly go underneath um the dining room table that we had um tess was always fractious and very very quick with his movements, but she was never, never far away. They never showed their teeth, they never growled. Tess would occasionally bark, but it was very rare. And he used to kick them and just... For what reason would he kick them? Penny would try to find me because she's, she's blind. Sustained. I'd like to move uh, identification in and the evidence. Any objection? Okay. Was pre-marked as M will be received into evidence without objection as defense 16. Sarah's tall tales of crap. Crap, Sarah. Again, it just angers me so much to hear this again as I record this video, to hear her say all this. I, I don't believe it's true. Again, I don't know Sarah. I don't know George, okay? But to allege that he was an animal abuser, it just makes me sick. I mean, that's really the bottom line. <clears throat> Can you describe this for the jury? This is again into our back porch, and this is the fence that I made for the dogs to have a little bit extra space. Um, Penny is next to me. She's the blind dog, and then Tess is down here at guarding the gate. 
part of these fake rabbits? Is that yes. Um, I used to call my son when he was a baby. He was my bunny rabbit. Overruled. Um, um, he was my bunny rabbit, so I used to collect bunnies, bunny rabbits, and so I have rabbits here and there throughout my house and um, in my little garden area. Right, this is the alcohol you are consuming? Yes. And this is a uh, close-up of which one? This is Tess, she's the deaf dog. How old were these dogs at that time, 2020? Gosh, maybe nine, maybe ten. Yes. Just her allegations of abuse to her, to the dogs, to every single person, all this drinking. I mean, she is the angelic one, supposedly, and he is the devil. That's basically how things are in Sarah's world. Just, just... Based on the court statements, identification A, I'd like to, this is one of the photographs that we introduced. Is it, is this, the, is this uh, injury to your ear? Yes. <clears throat> and then this is your, your living room, this is uh, identification C, the blow up. Yes. TV. Back to the night, early 
earlier in the evening when uh, I think y'all may have been out on the back patio and uh, you had suggested to George to call the children, but then uh, I think, did he call his brother or he, his brother called George? Do you remember? George called his brother. Okay. Um, and you made a statement about tell him tell him something so explain that to the to the jury um, I told him to tell his brother about you choking me the other day this is a separate choking incident um, we had been drinking and I had George to tell him, but he didn't tell him, so I said it in the background, so he would be aware. What did you tell him? Tell him why you choked me, or that you choked me. Okay. Now, You heard the testimony of the two neighbors, the boys that lived next to you? Yes. And uh, you heard that they were they were actually questioned, I think the um, the audio, they were audio interviewed, you heard from Detective Consul. I think it was two or three a couple of days later on the twenty fifth of February or twenty seventh of February. Yes. And uh, you heard their testimony earlier this week. Yes. Were they hear a kind of a thumping sound starting at the top of the steps, ending at, ending at the bottom? Yes. Have they got the knife roll? Yes. So explain to the jury that. So it was the night before. Um, again, I was sleeping, and in the middle of the night with the door barricaded, he came in and ripped me out of the bed. Um, First got me with one hand and then both got both hands and pulled me completely off of the bed and then like a caveman had my hair like this and was going down the stairwell taking me with him uh, to come downstairs so um, I could sit and drink with him. Do you believe that's the noise that the, uh, the two neighbor boys heard? I absolutely do. And it was just the night before? Correct. Now, some of the time when this abuse occurred, you called the police. Yes. And other times the police were not called. Correct. I want to refer to you the first time, I believe, you mentioned the 911 call. I believe that was July 25th of 2018. Yes. And... Uh, that was the incident in which Georgia kicked you in the eye. Stomped me. Stomped you. And you had grabbed his neck? Yes, I was able to uh, get my arms out from him pinning me down with his knees and grab his neck. So law enforcement came and um, Investigated. Yes. And both of you were arrested. Correct. Do you recall asking the officer when you were arrested? Why am I being arrested? Many times, yes. Do you, do you recall asking the officer why am I being arrested? Yes. And do you recall making any other statements to law enforcement as to why you did what you did to George? That was the first time ever that I actually officially fought back. Did you tell the officer that you were fighting back? 
Yes, because I was in great shock that I was getting arrested because of it. Now, on the, um, the two-minute video, the suitcase video, you mentioned to him, I think you said something, I can't breathe. He said, I can't breathe, and you said, that's how I feel when you're choking me. Were you referring to an isolated incident of the, the night before, two nights before, or whatever, or what were you referring to in general? In general, the more than two or three, four times that he had done it. Okay. And then, uh, what about cheating? He didn't physically cheat on you. No, he did not. Okay. And just, I, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but what, what are you referring to there? Um, George was, I believe, addicted to pornography, and a lot of that would be found on my phone from him supposedly wanting to call about <coughs> job interviews. Um, as a solution, I sat him down and I explained to him, to me, that's you visualizing yourself with someone else, um, or at least having a pleasurable moment with someone else or watching other people. And to me, I told him that I considered that cheating on me. Okay. And so he, he would download that on your phone? Yes. As, you got to tell the jury. As anyone who has ever been in love, or when you love someone, or primarily someone, or something, you go above and beyond, and you tolerate, and you endure, and you persevere, and. You try to make that person, person as spectacular as you possibly can, no matter the sacrifice that you may have to go through um, to serve someone else um, in a positive light so they can be better people for um, themselves and to just make them a happier person and love Love is very strong and love is very deep and love, I believe, is not fully understood in a lot of ways for how different people react to it and I very much deeply and passionately love George. I love him to this day. Did you not want to be alone? Um, at the beginning, um, through my divorce, um, it was very nice to have him around, and he was in, he was a man man to me, and um, I felt protected, and he was very nice. And as lame as it sounds, he used to compliment me, and it makes it made my day. So yes. During that period of time when uh, you first started seeing George, would it be fair to say that you had low self-esteem? Yes. Now, we talked about this previous arrest where you told the officer you were fighting back and you got arrested. talk about your conversations with law enforcement, but first I want to ask you, why did you go to the police station that day when you were interrogated there and we saw the two-hour video? Tell the jury. Um, the day of the incident, um, the detective Copsell gave me her business card with her personal cell phone number on it and said if I happen to remember anything or anything that I would like to add to the day for me to um, not hesitate to give her a call. So throughout the rest of the evening, I just 
something was off. I, I didn't feel comfortable with what she told me and how she told it to me. How long were you at the scene? Gosh, all day from the moment that they were there to the moment that the coroner's van um, drove off. All right, when, when it ended, did you stay in your home? No, I raced inside and collected some pajamas and a toothbrush and I um, went over to where my son was at my ex-husband's house. Did you break the dogs? I didn't even feed them. It was so fast. All right, and then once you got over to your uh, ex-husband's, what happened? As it relates to Detective Coppel. Coppel. Something just wasn't sitting right with me, and I I had a suspicion that she just wasn't being honest with me, so I took it upon myself. Sustained. So you called her. Tell, tell us about that. Um, I called her, and I told her that I felt that she was being dishonest with me. Um, she originally had told me that... Due to her being pregnant, it would just be a lot easier for her to have me come down to the station um, to pick up my phone. The original plan was for she and uh, Detective Lohan to return the phone to my apartment. Uh, but she said that um, it would be a lot easier for me to just come down and pick it up because I remember when I was pregnant. That's what she said. You remember when you were pregnant. So um, I said, I feel that you're tricking me, and I feel that you're being very sneaky about something, and I don't believe that you're being honest with me. And I said, regardless, I'm still going to come. Sustained. So you agreed to come, but you understood it was to get your phone? Correct. All right, you came that afternoon to the station? I did. And the original agreement was they were to come to you? Correct. All right. When you got to the station, what happened? I was just going to be picking up my phone. I had, I mean, my car was there. I had everything in my car. It was just a regular. I'm just going to go in, maybe sign something, and pick up my phone. And there's people that are um, over here at the windows, and I thought that I was supposed to go over there to get my phone. And Detective Lowen came down and um, said that my phone was upstairs. So if I would just follow him upstairs, that's where my phone was. And then I was taken into a, I guess it was an interrogation room, and they told me to sit down and that um, then I guess the interview or interrogation began, and I just simply kept getting my phone. Sarah, tell the jury why. Yes. Wow. Oh, she was being so dishonest with me. Well, Sarah, I think you were being dishonest with them. Could she have made up something to get you down there? Yes. You may proceed. Miss Finn? Miss Finn? Tell the jury why you lied to the police. I lied to the police. Basically everyone, because I was extremely fearful of being arrested. I made the first attempt of me calling 911 by telling them what happened, and I thought that they were going to help me, but instead I was arrested for calling 911. So you made the decision to lie? I did. Did you stay with that lie? Are you telling the truth today? I am. Now let me take you back to the um, <coughs> to this incident. Is it fair to say? that when George Torres is sober, he commits no violence against you? No. Is that fair to say? Yes. Is it fair to say that every time that he's intoxicated or every time that you're hit by him or harmed by him, it's when he's intoxicated? Yes. As a result, when he's drinking... 
Does it change your outlook? Yes. Could you explain that to the jury? I'm always fearful. Um, paranoia. Why? I, Why? Because I try to protect and defend myself for fear something happens at the last ultimate second. But you're always that way, fearful. Is it because of these prior incidences? Absolutely. Do you try to placate? All the time. What do you What do you mean? I, with the puzzles and the painting and feeding the ducks across the way at the pond, uh, listening to music, trying to go for a walk on the trail, anything that I possibly can. I told you I was running out of things to entertain him with. Why do you think, George, what, what, what bothers him? Sustained. Does he does he tell you? What he calls for your sake? Sustained. As a result of how he, he behaves towards you in that intoxicated state, how were you feeling the night of this event? Objection has to be answered. Overruled. Extremely nervous, um, anxiety galore, just, I can never relax. When he's drinking? Yes. And the state of intoxication that he was at, at the time of this event, is that the state that scares you the most? It's the tone, yes. There's a lot of alarms and red flags that go on throughout the day or night or whenever it is that we are drinking. Tell, tell us about tell us about that. How that heightens does that heighten your sense of safety? At all times. But especially when he's drinking? Oh yes. All the time. And then his mood? Yes, it depends on what mood he's in that day. Well, do you have do you have like a sixth sense of how he's doing? Yes, I knew George very well. Um, from... Sustained. Can you tell us what you mean by that? Sixth sense or knew, knew him very well. you can say that I was trained by fear with him, just it's, it wasn't fun anymore when we would drink and we would uh, hang out on the back porch. It wasn't fun anymore because I knew inevitably that something was going to happen to me one way or another. You know, those, those bruises that we saw of him, they look pretty deep. Tell the jury what you were thinking. From the bat here? Yes. I didn't want to die that night. I... I can't describe it to you. It's terrifying love to a certain degree where my plan was to show him the next day and just I I wanted him to be better and treat me nicer and be the person that he was when I originally met him and I knew that was in him still. I knew that it could be found and I just couldn't figure out what it was that I was doing wrong in order for it to not be back to where that was and I was tired of living in fear and just sick all the time of 
figuring out how I can entertain him so I don't die and uh, continue a relationship with my son and try to live a normal life. That wasn't a normal life for me. And just, I, I bottom line is I didn't want to die. I would, have, I would have died or I would have been disfigured or maimed or if, if it weren't me with the bat, it would have been him if he were to have gotten out. All right, y'all. So, knowing this case, following this case for some time, I see right through all of this. My concern, my concern is that the jury, even one member of that jury, is not seeing through all this, these stories, this made up, life that she starts out with oh it's such a I struggled and then I met my husband we fell in love then we had a child we got divorced and then I met the love of my life George Torres and then things became hell and I thought he was going to kill me and in the end well I killed him because, well, it was either me or him. And that part I do think is probably true. I think probably one of them probably wasn't going to make it. But I think Sarah, again, was the instigator. And I also believe she wasn't going to let him take her. She... She had anger. She was a drunk. Yes, he was also a drunk. But remember, she threatened him to his family multiple times. And what about the text? Hide and seek I shall. Torres, I'll make him pay. I'll get rid of him. Something to that effect. What does all that mean? It's a lot of, a lot of threats. And now she is throwing George under the proverbial bus. He's already dead. He's been dead for almost five years. Okay? He died a horrific death. He suffocated in that suitcase. And, and now she's going to make him look as horribly as possible to the entire world. I gotta say, I kinda hope the family of George Torres might consider a civil lawsuit against her. I don't know if that's possible, but if I was one of his children or his siblings, I think I'd be pretty pissed about now, after all of this stuff that she threw out there. But the bottom line is, I hope the jury sees through all this. And, and we don't have one that just sees it and says, Oh, wow, she was such an innocent person. And she was only trying to save herself. Because that's, that's not what happened. We all know that. Alright guys, that's all I've got for this one. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, as always. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.